Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. And in this tutorial, we are going to see the delivery process in data warehousing and the different processes involved in it with some simple examples. So without further ado, let's get into it. So in the previous lecture, we have seen the basic terminologies related to the data warehousing such as metadata, metadata repository, data cube, data mart and the virtual warehouse. Now we will see what is the actual delivery process in the data warehousing. So as you are already aware that a data warehouse will never be the static. It should evolve as the business will expand. So as the business evolves, its requirements keep changing and therefore the data warehouse must be designed to adjust with these changes. So that is why a data warehouse system needs to be more flexible to cope up with the business expansion. So ideally there should be some delivery process to deliver a data warehouse. However, the data warehouse project normally suffer from various issues that make it difficult to complete the task and deliverables. So most of the times the requirements are not understood completely. The architecture, design and the building components can be completed only after gathering and studying all the requirements in brief. So it will definitely require some delivery process to deliver the data warehouse. So the delivery method is a variant of the joint application development approach which is adopted for the delivery of a data warehouse. So we have staged the data warehouse delivery process to minimize the risk. The approach that we are going to see here will not reduce the overall delivery time scales but it will ensure the business benefits will be delivered incrementally throughout the development process. You have to remember one thing clearly. The delivery process is divided into different phases to reduce the project and delivery risk. So this following diagram explains the various stages which are involved in the delivery process of a data warehouse. So it involves the education, technical blueprint, building the vision, history load, ad hoc query, automation, business case analysis, business requirement, requirement evolution and the extending scope. So we are going to discuss each of the topics in detail to help you understand the delivery process in brief. Our first topic is strategy. So the data warehouse are strategic investments that will require a business process to generate the benefits. So this IT strategy is required to procure and retain funding for the project. So this is our first phase. The next phase is business case. So the objective of a business case is to estimate the business benefits which will be derived using a data warehouse. So these benefits may not be quantified but the projected benefits needs to be clearly stated. So if the data warehouse does not have a clear business case then the business tends to suffer from the credibility problems at some of the stage during the delivery process. So therefore it is very important that a data warehouse project should have a business case for the investment. Our next phase is education and prototyping. So this is very crucial phase. So the organizations experiment with the concept of data analysis and educate themselves on the value of having a data warehouse before setting for a solution. So this all will be addressed by prototyping. So the prototyping help us understanding the feasibility and the benefits by applying the data warehouse throughout the organization. So the prototyping activity on a small scale can promote the educational process as long as the prototype addresses a defined technical objective. It can throw away after the feasibility concept has been shown. The activity addresses a small subset of an eventual data content of the data warehouse and the activity time scale is non-critical. So these following points we have to keep in mind to produce an early release and deliver the business benefits. So the first one is identify that architecture that is capable of evolving. So as the business expand the data warehouse architecture should be flexible enough or we can say the capable enough 
for evolving with the business. The next point is focus on the business requirements and the technical blueprint phase. So here it is clearly saying that the business requirements is very important to deliver the more business benefits to the organization. The next one is limit the scope of a first build phase to the minimum that delivers the business benefits. And the last one is we have to understand the short term and the medium term requirements of the data warehouse. So these points you have to keep in mind to produce the early release and to deliver the business benefits. The next point is which is very important business requirements. So to provide the quality deliverables we should make sure that the overall requirements will be well understood. So if you understand the business requirement for both the short term and medium term then we can design a solution to fulfill the short term requirement. The short term solution can be grown to a full time solution. So this following aspects have to be determined in this stage. The first one is the business rule to be applied on the data. The next one is the logical model for the information within the data warehouse. The next one is the query profiles for the immediate requirement and the source system that provides this data. So these aspects we need to determine during the business requirement phase. The next one is technical blueprint. So in this stage our data warehouse will start to take the shape. So this space needs to deliver an overall architecture satisfying the long term requirements. So this space also deliver the components that must be implemented in a short term to derive any business benefit. So the blueprint needs to identify the following points which is given here. First one is the overall system architecture, data retention policies, backup recovery strategies, server and the data mart architecture. What is a data mart that we have seen in the previous tutorial. The next one is the capacity plan for the hardware and the infrastructure of the data warehouse and the components of a database design. So this blueprint needs to identify these following points which we have seen here. Our next stage is building the version. So in this stage the first production deliverable is produced. So this deliverable is the smallest component of a data warehouse. So this smallest component adds the business benefits. So in this stage we will create our first deliverable which will be the smallest component and adds the business benefits to the organization. The next one is history load. So this is the phase where the remainder of the required history is loaded into the data warehouse. So in this phase we do not add new entities but the additional physical tables would probably be created to store increased data volumes. So for example suppose the build version phase has delivered a retail sales analysis data warehouse with two months worth of history. So this information will allow the users to analyze only the recent trends and address the short term issue. So the user in this case cannot identify the annual and the seasonal trends. So to help him do so last two years sales history could be loaded from the archive. So the backup and recovery procedure may become complex. Therefore it is highly recommended to perform this activity within the separate phase. So in this phase the historical data will be loaded into data warehouse to analyze the long term trends to do the analysis for the long term. The next one is ad hoc query. Throughout our videos I have used ad hoc query word very often. So in this phase we configure an ad hoc query tool which will be useful to operate the data warehouse. So this tool can generate the database query. So you have to remember one thing here. It is recommended not to use this access tools when the database is being substantially modified. Our next stage is automation. So in this phase the operational management processes are fully automated. So this includes the transforming the data into a form suitable for the analysis. The next one is monitoring the query profiles and determining the appropriate aggregation 
to maintain the system performance. It also includes the extracting and loading the data from the different source system. And it also involves the backing up, restoring and archiving the data. So this phase helps the operational management processes to become the fully automated. Our next stage is extending the scope. So in this phase, the data warehouse is extended to address a new set of business requirements. So as the business evolves, the database should be capable for extending with the business. So the scope can be extended in two ways. The first one is by loading the additional data into the data warehouse and the next one is by introducing the new data marts using the existing information. So what is data marts, how they work and what is its significance that we have covered in the last lecture. So you have to remember one thing, one thing here. This phase should be performed separately since it involves the substantial efforts and the complexity. And in delivery process, this is the last stage which is requirements evolution. So from the perspective of delivery process, the requirements are always changeable. They are not static as we have discussed earlier. So the delivery process must support this and allow these changes to be reflected within the system. So this issue is addressed by designing the data warehouse around the use of data within the business processes as opposed to the data requirements of a existing queries. So the architecture is designed to change and grow to match business requirements the process operates as a pseudo application development process where the new requirements are continually fed into the development activities and the partial deliverables are produced. So these deliverables are fed back to the users and then reworked by ensuring that the overall system is continually updated to meet the business needs. So it means that the data warehouse should be flexible to cope up with the evolution of the business requirements. So in this lecture, we have seen the delivery process of a data warehousing in detail with some simple examples. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and also ring the notification bell to get the latest updates. Thanks for watching.